Hello, welcome to Access. I'm Rob. Joining us is Elle. Hello. Elle, I'm very jealous because you are one of the first people ever, actually, to play The Outer Worlds. I was. I mean, I couldn't have been more excited. And uh, yeah, so we've just basically landed on a planet. So I, we weren't allowed to tell you about the intro. They want to keep that a surprise. But right. we've, uh, we've basically just wandered over to a town called Edgewater. And this is your capture now. Like, yes, no yeah. one else has this capture. This is exclusive, a world exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> That's really exciting. Um, so we are. So what, what's the kind of gist behind what you're doing? And we, we talked about this at E3. It's a very sort of Fallout-ish style open world RPG. So talk us through what you're doing and and what's going on basically. So basically, there um, in in the worlds of outer worlds, there are two planets. One is um, kind of habitable, and uh, one is completely like long gone there's mutants there they've had their food supplies cut off so we're actually on the the slightly nicer planet which oh, okay. is still I thought, I thought you were going to say we were on the bad one <laughs> <laughs> no 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 we're still we're on the one that's uh, still a bit run down still a bit kind of um, fallout in style guess. in that you know everything's really no uh, a little bit run down a little bit rubbish but you know we've we've come to this town and we're trying to find a park for our ship okay this guy looks trustworthy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you've got like dialogue options I can I see there and yeah. do they sort of do you know how much they affect sort of like mission outcomes and things like that oh, well you're about to find out oh, okay but yeah this is this is a uh, you know the, the dev team said that they are really keen to make the new Vegas community happy so you can kind of take from that what you will sure and we should probably mention for those of people for those people who don't know this is developed by obsidian the developers of Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. And they were there whilst I was playing this and they were very excited actually to watch me play it, which made me really right. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I do hate when you get that. <laughs> You're like, the people who made the game watching you over your shoulder. Yeah. You're like, oh, please don't suck. <laughs> please don't be rubbish at the game. But yeah, so the power regulator, that's what we're, we're looking for because right. we need it for our ship. So we're like, can we just have yours? And he said, no, because it runs all the power in the town. I see. So. Let me guess. But if you do something maybe for him... <laughs> Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. <laughs> he means it's full of, exactly. full of bad things. <laughs> the botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. I have to say the humour in this was really good. I quite like that uh, lots of things that I thought would then be an option. So like you just said, oh, let me guess. I have to do something. <laughs> that was something that is one of the options. It's like, let me guess. You need something from me. I mean, that it, that does feel very fallouty. Yes. Um, yeah. Like I, I've always enjoyed sort of like the dialogue. I've never had the guts to actually pick the really sassy ones. Yeah. Like I'm always, I'm always like, I've got to do the honourable, really good person <laughs> playthrough. But I've always wanted to pick the kind of really cheeky, sarcastic responses. Yeah. The band of deserters came back to town. Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. That reason was me. I asked too much and pushed too hard. But I found this guy a bit creepy for some reason. <laughs> I was like, I don't the like his softly spoken we voice. To one community. The spacer's choice well, just his whole look. I mean, yeah. He just does it. He looks like a guy in these then types of games. Don't trust people Adelaide with hats. Yeah. <laughs> Especially hats like that and ties. I like Pavati's hair though. Yeah, Her she's got a good look. Very cool. I could right. come in useful. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sorry. It's one of the things I am quite I a big fan of having. I've not seen much of the Outer Worlds. In fact, this is the first time I've actually seen it, you know, running. But just the whole the whole aesthetic of oh, it. I am, I am down with yeah. this. It is gorgeous. I spent ages just looking around in this, and then I was like, oh no, I'm meant to be capturing <laughs> actual gameplay. So you are going to see that, me just right. looking around the world, because wrenches, it looks amazing. And pins and engine tape, so... I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you. And thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. 
So why are you asking it of us then, Reed? (laughs) Because we're the do-everything game protagonist. So we just got our first companion. So Pavati, she's going to join us now. So obviously in this, you can have um, people with you and they they fight. You can command them to do their kind of special attacks. Uh, They can get hurt. So yeah, we've acquired our first, yeah. Can they die? Yeah. So and they and they they said um from what we saw at E3 they were saying there that they have tried to give them like real personality real right. backstories so you will be quite sad if they die. <laughs> I mean I'm quite sad when my companions who don't have personalities die. Yeah. Because you sort of give them your own personality you create your own story yeah, around exactly. them and everything. I've still not gotten over Sorry. Lydia in Skyrim. I've oh, I know. <laughs> I chopped her head off by accident. <laughs> by accident. <laughs> it really was. And then, but then I couldn't go back. It's I didn't want to go back because I was in a hard battle, so I just had to leave her dead. I was like, sorry. <laughs> Makes it more realistic, though. Like, when the stakes are high, <laughs> yeah. like, you, just, you just roll. You just roll with it. Exactly. And I think I remember asking you at E3. I don't know if you know the answer to this now. Um, so but Thompson, are there, like... Gear. romance Does options in the game like oh I don't know or stutters, yeah that so wasn't something placed. that was mentioned yeah. I remember you could in, in Fallout 4 you could romance your companions yeah or you could also make them hate you depending on <laughs> depending Ooh. on the actions you did I have to say yeah I definitely could be nice or nasty Mr. to Top this companion okay. so that kind of suggests that they'll have no lights to possibly see or heat to you know we, we might be able to yeah. give them an opinion of us but uh, yeah I definitely don't know for sure just, and what do you generally play as Elle when you're right. when you're picking dialogue options do you like to go for when, traditionally on the first Max. place where everyone's really nice but you know no. is that you or do you, <laughs> <laughs> do you go sassy you'll see the <laughs> options I pick in this game <laughs> I'm not nice. I'm not a walkover. Do you know what I mean? I don't want people to think they might be able to boss me around or anything. Yeah, so now we're just basically, uh, he told us where another power generator is. I see. Um, and it powers, uh, what he was saying is, basically he kind of runs this town with uh, an iron fist. He doesn't seem very pleasant. And, um, and so we're going to go and see the other town that are kind of deserted this one and made their own space and then uh, go and find the power generator he's told us is powering their town cool simple yeah just off there so, get the power generator exactly all done I like the um, the old aurora in the sky there it looks amazing it is so beautiful in a minute I'm going to turn around and show you the full view at some point uh, shortly after this and it is it was unbelievable like I said I had to keep reminding myself you can't just capture like 50 minutes of you looking into the sky well you could <laughs> I could <laughs> <laughs> that's a later video don't worry Marauder Vandal. Okay, so we're about to see some combat, I assume. Here yes. we go. So I had to cycle through all my weapons because you've got four <laughs> slots. Okay, so this is like a sniper rifle. Oh, nothing beats a long range surprise headshot. Right? Yeah. They all it's know my where you favorite. are now. Yeah. So as you can see, Pilates stepped up to. Uh, so this is tactical time dilation. I see. So it's. Uh... <laughs> Otherwise known as cool slow mo shooting. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I felt very cool at that. <laughs> Oh. So yeah, if you're familiar with rats, it's almost identical. So uh, when you go into it, it'll let you it'll say like maim or blind, depending on where you're going to hit them, and it'll tell you where's best to hit right. them. So it gives you a little a little breather in the middle of combat. But it doesn't it doesn't pause it like that. So it just goes slow mo. It goes slow mo. So there's like an edge there. There's like an urgency to it. Exactly, that... and it runs out obviously if you sure uh, if you're moving and firing in it, it it gets used up faster than if you're just standing still i'm in trouble then because <laughs> <laughs> in fallout like so many times the only way i have not died is being able to just effectively pause the game yes, in rats and exactly. have a, a, a quick breather <laughs> this is me just cycling through my things to make sure everything's loaded <laughs> i can see you're itching to use that sword i know on something I was really excited. I also have a shovel in my inventory that earlier on in the game, in the part I couldn't capture, that I was just smacking people with, which was quite fun. Nice. Yeah, I did huh? like it. Here they come. So we're going to quickly cycle through weapons again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, surprise attack from the right. And yeah. Okay, so here we go. This is me falling over the back of a rock. It's fine, though. Oh, that's a satisfying it's headshot. It's so satisfying. Nice, a triple headshot. Yeah, I was pretty happy. With Badass. That. <laughs> I was trying to check on her because I was worried. I was like, oh, I don't want to kill my first companion really early, so let me make sure she's okay. 
think you've got a glimpse there when you pan the camera around of, of the other planet. Yes, yes, you can see it in the sky, so there's kind of moons and there's a ring, so it looks amazing. Everyone all right? I get the feeling Pavati's not really doing that much to help. Yeah, she wasn't supremely useful, although I didn't get to use any of her abilities, really. So they do have, I think companions have two special abilities. Um, but because I was just kind of, this was my first hands-on, I was like, I'm just going to focus on me killing people and, <laughs> and do less with her. You are so. doing it pretty well. Still alive. I know. I have to go for a crotch shot. <laughs> Just finish him off. I mean, you did present it for you. Yeah, I was like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> it's devastating when I kill someone and they're empty. So, yeah, I'm just keeping an eye on my weapons in this because uh, obviously they get damaged and you need to fix them. So. Right. Oh, I was really excited about these. I thought they were like cool loot boxes, but then they weren't. And this is like fully open world, the game? So it's semi-open world. So you do get to do kind of some exploring between the worlds. Obviously missions will take you spot to spot, but you can kind of, I spent a lot of time at the beginning just running around, <laughs> like seeing how far I could climb and clamber. So, and there's, yeah, two different, two different planets. Although I'm not sure how you get between them yet. I must admit, I'm also a big fan of wet ground graphics yeah <laughs> like genuinely it's, it's one of my nerdy things that i always look for like i like obviously i like water graphics yeah. i like i'll oh, see look at that it looks amazing I oh my know. god those are the rings around the planet yeah that is so cool it's like something from no man's sky almost that's exactly what i thought when i was looking at it oh, it's just god. so oh so anyway, that was, I gave myself a quick second to look. Back, back to the puddles. Yes. We've had enough of, you know, <laughs> breathtaking cosmic vistas. Show I, me some wet mud. <laughs> exactly. But I, I do really like that kind of thing. It's the kind of thing I spend ages just looking at yeah. whenever I fire up a new game. It's like, okay, <laughs> what happens when it rains? Like, does the ground go muddy? Um, and this is pleasing. I'm liking the wet, the wet cobblestones. I'm liking the wet mud. Yeah, it does. It just, it, it looks really good. There's something about it that's just really beautiful and it, when it was raining earlier I really enjoyed that and I was like oh this is yeah I'm kind of getting more enjoyment out of the rain than anything else it's also like I'm I'm really enjoying the the extraterrestrialness of this like you can tell it's not earth but exactly. also it, it it does feel like I'm convinced by the reality of this place like yes, I feel yeah. like it's a real place like it feels you know lived in exactly it's not yeah. just a oh, alien planet like it, <laughs> <laughs> Well, they've made it feel really run down in a nice, realistic way. That's yeah. something I'm kind of a sucker here. for when it's, Ooh. like you said, it feels lived in. Our Grace Romero seems cool. So yeah. that's a hat you can trust, yeah. by and large. <laughs> <laughs> Bowler hats, no. <laughs> yeah, kind of cowboy style, yeah. like, you know. They're, they're, they're going to be tough on the outside, outside but soft on the inside. Exactly. <laughs> I felt bad no, here because I picked sorry. the... Uh, the sassy option the and then she was rude back and then Lady she's like no Zoe I'm sorry that was rude and I was like oh Just no I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> now I'm pacing around wondering if marauders got to her I did then pick another sassy option I've crossed off my <laughs> I couldn't resist this ain't about them I go looking for Zoe I leave the camp undefended seeing as I'm the only one of us who knows her way around the gun Hence my dilemma. I feel like that's not somewhere I'd want to live. It's like a, a, an abandoned camp with marauders all Next the way me. around, and then you're the only person who's good with a gun. Telling me. That seems stressful. I check a room, but I got yelled at for snooping once already. Well, you're here now as well. Yeah, don't worry, guys. I've got it. It's not like Zoe to go wandering. Figured she might be out scavenging, but that ain't exactly her talent. Can't imagine where she's gone. Vale's a wide place. She could be anywhere. I decided to make up for my big weakness and say, Honest. I was like, I'll help. I'm sorry about being so <laughs> sassy. They all get you to do their fetch quests for the for for them eventually. Exactly. So yeah, this is the, the other town. So we were in Edgewater earlier and then this is, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, uh, yeah, it's basically where everybody who got sick of Edgewater and sick of uh, Thompson went and set up their own kind of little little space at the botanical lab. I 
And so supposedly one of the things that draws people to this camp is that uh, Adelaide, who was the woman who was talking about earlier, has managed to make things grow again. Okay. Apparently that's something that's quite difficult. Right. I mean, it does look quite lush, this area. Yeah, I'm seeing it? lots of plants, lots of trees. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so we're just searching Zoe's room, the girl that's gone missing. Level up. That's a satisfying level up screen. I know. And then you get so many points. So you can put them into, obviously, all these different sections. They're reasonably straightforward. Um, and it increases everything in it. And then when you get to a certain point, you can start to... Uh, I'm sorry, I'll just look, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> Your stats there. Melee. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> Through the roof. Yeah, pretty much I was like... Everything else. Look at your defence, for goodness sake. <laughs> Dodge nine, <laughs> melee thirty six. I was. <laughs> I, I, look, I know who I am, Rob. <laughs> and the thing is, I was like, shall I go and put some more in other ones? I was like, no, I'm just going to keep putting them in my attack. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it, 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 when you put point in, it improves everything in it, and then once they're, I think once they're at fifty, you can then start to pick which of the elements inside a section. Right. Um, it improves. But yeah, I went I went heavy on the attack. I think at no point did I put any points into defence. Attack is the best defence. Yeah, exactly. What's the point of having a defence stat if right? enemies are dead before they can even attack you? Yeah, they should not be that close to me. I've done I've done a bad job if I'm having to defend myself. Yeah. I do love when someone writes a diary and just helpfully leaves the pages scattered around their room. <laughs> page 12 there, page 21. I'll just <laughs> pop that under the rug. <laughs> Although I did, after this, I was like, I'm not going to go and look for Zoe, which I felt bad about, but I was like, no, I want to see how this power thing plays out. Some more very satisfying puddles there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, immediately just switched off that quest. <laughs> I felt bad, but I was like, do you know what? Nope. <laughs> I want to go and, I wanna go and uh, make a choice about this power, so... I'm sure Zoe's fine. I'm sure everything works out for her. Yeah, she could look after herself. We've got you've got fruit growing there. Yeah, exactly. Mushrooms. I can easily live here. <laughs> look at this. I know. It's so cool. I always I'm a sucker for anything sci-fi where they've got one room, like say on a spaceship or something, where they're just growing I things. Know, it's like, cool, isn't it? If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you up. Adelaide McDevitt. Whatever yeah, they've all got really good names for. in this that really Limit suit that kind of sci-fi western feel. Dear? I have been called that among other things. Green thumb, grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. Oh, I think we should call you the strange old lady who keeps flowers. <laughs> <laughs> it's catchy, I like to it. To give you your full title. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, you got such pretty trees in here. So a tree is like a thing that most people here would find like amazing. I think that there are there's actual uh, flora growing and stuff. Yeah, from what I have understood from kind of some of the things the characters have said, it seems like maybe the the land isn't very good or the grounds being kind of contaminated in some way because it seems like they're always like, oh, she's been able to get stuff out of this ground. Right. So it seems like possibly it's hard to grow vegetation. But that's me speculating. Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace then? How how can you not like Reed? <sighs> Make a man. He's incredibly trustworthy and lovely man. I mean, in the hat. Hello. <laughs> like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. I mean, they really are as well. Are we gonna go sassy? No. Would do such no. A thing. Well, I decided that I liked her more than I liked you. <laughs> like Strange old lady yeah. who grows trees. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> she won me over with Canary's that name. Got a regulator. You want ship parts? You ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. I love that noise. It's like big decision time. Yeah. Oh, what are you gonna do? Exactly. Gonna divert all that power? These are the choices I love making. I kind of. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the choice I always think about is that: do I do I nuke yes. Megaton in Fallout exactly. Three? <laughs> 
So we've jumped ahead now. So the uh, the team, when I was capturing this, they had to save a bit further on, so we didn't have to make the whole journey to the plant. Okay. Uh, so I've got kind of different weapons, and I'm a different a different person now. But we basically just jumped ahead to the plant where I can now make the decision about right which thing. town I take power away from. Okay. I also have a fun new weapon because uh, obviously enemies in this are all. Uh, vulnerable to different things okay. so guns aren't great on the robots in this game but I do have a lovely uh, electrical blade excellent that takes them out very nicely Incoming. I mean that is something I you just know that's just knowledge I have in playing yes. video games robots electricity exactly <laughs> I love the subtlety of that computer. Yeah. <laughs> this computer is locked. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, I did enjoy using all the terminals in this game. I was like, oh, this is so Fallouty. Yeah, I love that in a game. When you get somewhere and it's like, surprise, it isn't here. Now you've got to go and find several other, <laughs> several other places. It's that classic thing in RPGs where <laughs> about four or five layers of fetch quest on, you forget <laughs> what the initial thing you wanted was in the first place. Exactly. I can see enemy activity on your sort of compass up there. Yes, yeah. Yes, we got uh, Reed's passcode earlier on. He trusted us with it, which was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Time to use the lightning stick. I think so, yeah. What a rubbish sentry bot. I <laughs> <laughs> you think they'd have some kind of... I was like, of I'm loudly <laughs> clomping down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so your fear of robots, Al, does it extend to sort of non-humanoid robots like this? It depends how, like, scary they are. When they're, they, they seem really intimidating. Like, this doesn't intimidate me. Like, I feel like... I mean, look. I feel like I could kick that thing over. It's like a money spider for someone with arachnophobia. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But when they're kind of like really big and they seem really cold, and, you know, like I, they're just programmed to kill me and that's it. And I, and there's nothing I can do about it. That's quite scary. Like when we were playing XCOM and there was the huge white robot that suddenly kind of leapt out of nowhere what towards us and was bigger than all of us. You blew it the hell up though. Yeah, that was very satisfying. This looks like the centre of this place. I know, when Decor. I came in here, I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. It all just looks great. I, that's, I just, like every area I went into, I just loved how it felt. It does definitely look like a game that when I play it, I will just be ignoring all those missions and just <laughs> <laughs> wandering around, exploring stuff for hours on end. I mean, I'm gonna be looking at the sky for the first 15 hours. Yes, so, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, get ready, Twitter, for a bombardment of screenshots. Oh, yeah. You're liable to get scalded. Hi, friend. Die. <laughs> I was like, why am I in combat? I'm not getting attacked. Sure, my companion is, but I'm fine. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I felt quite happy in this spot because you, you can, at like the level I'm at, obviously at this point, you can take the robots down quite easily. I feel like they're not going to remain that easy all the way through the game. Lots of dead scientists around here. <laughs> like, <laughs> what on earth has been going on? Doesn't seem like a very uh, like a workplace health and safety would be happy about. Okay, so is this what do you get to do at workbenches? Like upgrade weapons and things like yeah, that? Yeah, modify them. So unfortunately, all my weapons already had kind of cool mods. I was excited about this hammer. I was like, can I can I have this? Um, but yeah, basically everything I looked at already had a mod on it, so I I couldn't add anything new. But yeah, this would be where you and you can like break stuff down. You can repair things when they've fallen under a hundred percent. 
Um, so yeah, that's a workbench. Very smooth ascent up that ladder. So we're still looking for this sort of power generator. Yeah, so we have, so we have to like turn, do three switches now. One to go. Um, rather than just the one if at the computer. If we send the power to Miss McDevitt, what happens to the veil? I was just admiring that lava or whatever it is going <laughs> up there. I was like, oh, looks cool. <laughs> more sentry bots and more dead scientists. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> I just really don't know what happened to I do love that kind of thing, though. Like, I've been playing I mean, I, Skyrim again recently. I'm yeah. always playing Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that kind of thing where you go into an area and it doesn't explicitly tell you what's happened. It's like a sort of... That kind of mystery, I guess. Environmental storytelling. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. But I like it when it's not too obvious. Like, sometimes you get yes, environmental yeah. storytelling and they basically may as well have just written out the script for you. And sometimes it's a little more... You know, you have to do a bit more detective work. To, yeah, to that's what I like when I have on. to kind of piece it together. Yeah. I mean, just give up. Give up, mechanical guardian. Bard. But then it just said use under <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, thanks. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm excited to see what you're going to choose to do, Elle. Yeah? In terms of this power. And I really couldn't decide. I genuinely was like, oh. <laughs> I like the kind of detail. There it is! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's do this. Sprint hey, time. Mr. Can we talk? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Do you understand? Pavati has some things Pavati? to say before I make my big decision. Shut up, Pavati. <laughs> I wouldn't mind hearing your opinion. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing, Pavati, for God's sake. I'm sorry. I was like, is she going to tell me something sort of interesting? Is there like a, a fact I should know? Story. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough salt to God, our no one cares, Pavati. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit sassy with her later. <laughs> That's enough from you. I mean, she's put laying on the guilt trip now. Yeah, yeah there exactly. There are decent people there. This is the kind of moral dilemma I love in RPGs. We just don't know what the good option is. Exactly. Miss McDevitt's built something beautiful. Somehow she's talked the ground into giving life again. It's plain to see she's made the Vale a better place. Fed the hungry, tended the sick, gave a home to those that had none. But Miss McDevitt delights in Edgewater's suffering. She wants to hurt the town. Do you really want to be party to that kind of hatred? I was like, Pavati, make your mind up. <laughs> it's like, what do you want me to do then? Because earlier on she was like, oh, just, don't hurt the deserters. Like and now she's like, but also hatred. <laughs> it's just making the conversation, the the choice oh, hard well, for us, Pavati. Exactly. So I told her just then, I was like, I was barely listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, someone's getting disappointed after this decision. You're yeah, I was make. like, that can't really. You can't no please like, everyone. Yeah. I know what I'd pick. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's the botanical laboratory. Right. It's more important. That's why I was like, they're growing stuff exactly. there. And they're growing food, and, and food is very important. You've got to think about the many, not just, exactly. you know, a, a handful of I mean, admittedly got... hard-working and <laughs> <laughs> hard-done-by <laughs> workers who are going to suffer lots now. They have no power. Oh. But, I mean, they, they were like, Edgewater's, they, everyone's just living on tuna there. But then when we went to the deserters, they've got, like, fruit growing. I was like, okay, I'm trying to decide where do I most want to eat <laughs> if just, I'm yeah, going to be on this planet for a while. Just everyone from Edgewater, just move. All the hard, exactly. just move to the to the nice place. Yeah, bring bring your tuna. I mean, they're going to have to Fine. now. Yeah, sorry, you don't really have a choice, everyone. It's the daytime all of a sudden. <laughs> turn the power off they probably already know <laughs> when everything shut down <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we've got some rewards over here 
I was sad because I, I don't have my cool rifle that I got with the first character. So I think I've got, yeah, that that's like kind of your starter gun. And I mean, that looks, a, that looks good enough. Yeah, it's an assault rifle. I think a light assault rifle. I was like, hi, friend. Here we go. Oh, you're being attacked by the space dog. Yeah. So it is actually really useful. She hits Kevin. And then, yeah. So this is, you can see here, the options. I can stagger. I can blind. I won't blind. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, uh, and now just finish it. <laughs> so the stagger you want to make? Just kill. Just kill. kill. Just kill. Please kill. I want exploding heads. Oh, I love looting people. I had to remind myself not to loot everything all the way through this because... <laughs> That's a mistake I've made before, and then I'm like, oh, did anybody want to watch, like, 48 minutes of me just looting stuff? And I can't get over how good that planet looks just hanging there in the sky. I know. I feel sad that Earth doesn't have, like, yeah, a... Yeah, I was about to say. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, a really close, visible planet. Oh, like we got is the moon. God. Yeah. Rubbish. <laughs> it's so rubbish. <laughs> and Venus and Mars. Exactly. They're just all, like, stars. So what's the point? You know what I mean? I want, I want big, multicoloured planets yeah. right over us. I want to be orbiting... A binary star system so we've got two suns yeah a blue one as well and i want kind of a big ring of debris around us so we've got a cool ring as well <laughs> yeah. that's all i want that's all i want rob if we had that it would just be mundane and the norm though yeah well that's the thing isn't it you think it would be so amazing but of course it wouldn't because it would just be what your planet looked like so we're back now as you can see <laughs> all the lights are off uh, it's fine. Yeah. They don't need it. <laughs> they look happy. <laughs> These residents. Yeah, sorry, everybody. So they really lay it on thick here. What, what are we supposed now? to do now? <laughs> not anyone's, not my problem. Move to the nice area with the trees and the fruit. Go yeah, there. it's not like there's no options for you. I put my whole life in that kind of. Sorry. You shouldn't have. People don't like tuna that much. <laughs> Reed, hi. He's not going to be happy. You want to know what gets my bio churning? <laughs> I don't care, Reed. <laughs> Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters. It's your fault. You shouldn't have worn a creepy sure. hat. Doesn't indeed you use people, mate. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just Because we don't like you. Exactly. Yeah, Why I went, I went to a sassy option here. <laughs> I mean, they're both quite sassy. They're good, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I put the fate of our town in the hands of some. I mean, call me a feckless transient. That's so rude. This is my fault. I mean, at this point, I would just be getting out my shotgun my yeah. and taking his head off. <laughs> exactly. Whatever you were hoping to find. I was like, why do I even care at this point? What's he going to do to me? I have got guards. So this is cool. So now your choice has one. made it quite difficult for you yeah. to come back here. Exactly. There's an intimidate option there, but you just, you, I guess yeah. you don't have the, the intimidation Edgewater power. I know, yet. I'm so sad. I had some good low-level intimidation earlier on, but yeah, that was too high for me. Space's choice will shut us down. I was like, do I not just have like a some of us punch in the throat option? By then. Some will move on. Some will starve. They really like, <laughs> once I made the decision, they really were like, here's what you've done to this town. And I was like, oh God. Stop trying to make us feel sorry for you, Reed. I know, I, I was like, Reed, I'm never gonna feel sorry for you. The people maybe, not you. Level up, yeah. <laughs> like that. And so we're all gonna is, die, uh, level up. Yeah, I'm like, woohoo, <laughs> that got me 18,000 XP. <laughs> Let's add some more to my melee stats. Exactly. Thanks, impoverished workers of... <laughs> It's <laughs> water. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this was this was the the end of the mission basically. So um, uh, which I didn't know, which was why I was so carefully <laughs> <laughs> like playing with all my uh, all my skills here. And also, obviously, this was like a different build. So at the beginning, you can uh, you obviously like choose your build, you choose your specializations, and uh, and so this was like an entirely different build to what I made. So I was like, let me get that melee pumped up. <laughs> let me yeah. get all that attack done. And then these are the perks. So again, if you played Fallout, that'll be. Uh, reasonably familiar to you so I already had the health perk on there and then I got so you get uh, I think one perk every two every two levels cool so yeah so I went for armor there but yeah that was it then they came over and dragged me off the game because I was having the best time <laughs> and I was trying to quietly play as much as I could because I think they let me play a bit longer than I was supposed to anyway but uh, yeah I can't recommend this enough I had a brilliant time if you if you are a New Vegas fan and you've been waiting for this kind of perfect uh, follow up to that this is it it was oh 
absolutely fantastic. Well, I am incredibly excited for it. Uh, that is The <laughs> Outer Worlds. Let us know in the comments uh, what you thought of the game. Are you going to be picking up when it comes out? Which is October 25th. Also, don't forget to click that notification bell so you stay up to date with all of our videos. And we'll see you again soon. For the players.